So the other day I was talking to someone about doing stretchy, stretchy spline rigs and stretchy rigs in Maya and um, talking about what I like to use and not like to use. And um, I came up with talking about how in dual quaternion you can get some weird results if you scale joints. And it took some people by surprise. So um, as I was explaining it, I did a really terrible job. So I thought I would make a little video to update what I was talking about. So anyway, uh, I'm going to just make a piece of geometry in here. That looks great. Uh, freeze it, delete its history, and duplicate it. So I have two separate pieces of geometry that I can work with. And I'm going to go ahead and skin them with the exact same skin. Uh, I'm just using the standard uh, default skinning. I didn't change anything there. Uh, but what I am going to do is on the second cylinder, I'm going to go ahead and make it dual quaternion. Um, one of the nice things about the dual quaternion is if you're doing any sort of twist joints and stuff like that, um, it actually is really great with holding volume. So if I look at my DQ and then I look at my linear, you can see that I'm losing some volume there. And I'll smooth them, which is going to usually be your result for, um, you know, when you're rendering. And you can it's hard to see, but if you, you know, if I toggle between the two of them, you can see, um, you know, I'm getting a result that's not quite as great with that linear, losing some volume and stuff like that. It's also really great uh, when you're using um, DQ, uh, when you're doing shoulders and things like that, dual quaternion is really nice. Um, does some nice volume preservation, does some nice offsetting, things like that. Um, but what it doesn't do is play nice with asymmetrical scaling. And what I mean by that is when you're doing any sort of scaling on uh, just one axis of your joint. So that common practice is with the spline IK, you put a divide node on your uh, curve info node. And what's really great is it spits out a one uh, if it's you know at its default or a larger number. If it's larger, a lot smaller, a lot smaller. And it can connect that into your scale perfectly. Um, the problem is when you're using something like dual quaternion is it doesn't really um, respond to that very quickly. And you can see what I got here. So here's my uh, DQ weight. I'll actually go here and change the color of it um, so you can see it a little bit better. And you can see how it's doing some really wonky stuff that's pretty much unexpected in my um, my result here. Whereas the linear it actually is doing what I think it should do. Um, so I've played with that a little bit and you know back in the day I used to use the scaling technique all the time. And then I was I stopped that for other reasons, um, and so instead what I'll do is I'll use a molt off of that original divide and use the uh, translate X of the joint instead. And what's cool about that is uh, when you're doing like prototyping and stuff like that, you can see um, how quickly uh, that works. So what I'm going to do is just move these joints and translate their X as if the um, spline AK was going to do that. And when I'm prototyping, I want to make sure that uh, I'm in axis, or if I'm moving joints in their length, basically. Um, it's always safer to type numbers straight into the channel box. Um, but if you are going to move them by hand, you want to make sure you're in, you know, I'm holding down W and left mouse button, going to my axis and going into parent space. And what that's going to do is actually move those joints in their length along the axis of their parent. So this is the orientation go to world space or go to uh, object space you can see this is the orientation of that joint uh, joints parent I'm looking at this one here um, I don't want to move in this value because you can see I'm getting transit X and transit Y values because really that difference is along uh, from its parent to itself so if I go back to axis and whoops woo I went too far let's go back and go to parent uh, you can see I'm only getting a single axis change in my translate X and that's what I want so if you think about this as like a stretchy spline IK and I'm only affecting that translate X, you see I get a much better result than I was getting from that scale, right? Um, the other thing that I've, I found, and this is part of the reason why I stopped using scale a long time ago, was that you can get a reversing effect, right? So if I go here and, and scale this joint out, you see I'm not just scaling in a positive, I'm also scaling in a negative. And so if this was like a shoulder or something like that, I don't want to have those vertices flying backwards like that. It's just going to be a pain in the butt. Um, whereas if I'm translating it, it's not going to, I can do it in a single axis and it's not going to do that to me. Um, so yeah, so something to think about. And at some point I'll do a spline tutorial when I have some more time. Uh, and I hope that helps.